Hey St. Matthews, there's a new way that the congregation can give to the church. Go to the App Store or the Google Store and download the Joyfully 2 UMC and install it on your smartphone. After you install the app, search for St. Matthews 600 East Florida Street, Greensboro, North Carolina. Now you are ready to give to your favorite church. To, once you have downloaded the app, it's very easy to make a donation to the church. To make a donation to the church, all the thing you have to do is press your Give button. Once you press the Give button, it will take you out to the web page so you can make your donation. Once you get to the uh, location of putting in your donations, the first thing you want to do is put in the amount of donations you want to put in. Let's say we want to put in a $100 donation. Once you put in the amount of donations, you designate the uh, way you want the donations to go to. Say, for example, you want to put in $100 into the missions fund. Um, once you designate the lo location, you put your $100 into your mission, enter your name, your first name, your last name, your email, your address, the city, your designated state, your zip code, and then you enter your, the name on your credit card. You can scan that on your credit card. Your card number, you can scan that. Your CVV, which is the three-digit number on the back of your card. Your expiration date on your card. And once you've completed that, press the Give button and you're completed. If you want to designate more funds to the church in a different category, you just repeat the process again. Once you completed that, you're completed and you've given your money to St. Matthews and we appreciate your donations. Thank you. merciful and just. You are loving and you forgive our sins every day. You bring healing into our lives, Lord. In the time of grief and loss, you somehow bring comfort so that we're able to wake up each day a little bit more confident that everything's going to be all right, a little bit more sure, Lord, that you're on our side and we don't stand alone. We lift up a prayer this morning for all of our concerns that we have named here today. We lift up a concern and prayer for the one who broke into the church last Sunday, Lord. We just lift up a prayer for everybody today. Just, Lord, bless us with your peace and 
move our hearts to not be afraid of the world, move our minds to be stilled in you so that we can walk humbly with our God. And you may order our steps to walk a path that takes us where we do not know, but trust that's where we need to be. Open us now to, to your will and way this morning. Open our hearts to just say, thank you, Lord, for one more day of life. And wake us up so that we may be able to give you praise and glory today and forever. Amen. The scripture this morning is taken from Psalm chapter 37, verses 1 through 8 and verse 37. It is found in your pew Bible on page 483. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Psalm 37, beginning with verse 1. A Psalm of David. Don't worry about the wicked. Don't envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like springtime flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. He will make your innocence as clear as the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine <coughs> like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked deep schemes. Stop your anger. Turn from your rage. Do not envy others. It only leads to harm. Verse 37. Look at those who are honest and good, for a wonderful future lies before those who who love peace. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? the valley and over the hill, I know it had to be God, how did I make it through the storm, how did I make it through the rain, if you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain, it was God. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. Oh, I made it. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It's amazing grace. You brought me through the night Lord you kept me And you never left me You stood right by my side There were so many times When I came so close Old man deaf he tried to take me in So the reason I'm here it's not hard for me to see In fact, it's so easy to explain It is God's grace It was God's grace It was God's grace It's amazing grace
is absolutely by God's grace than any of us are here this morning. Made it this far by faith. And can look forward to the days to come. Now we're looking at uh, the theme of evil, good and evil, and how do we draw the line? How do we know what's good and what's evil? Even how do we know what's in our best interest? Today we're going to look at it from the standpoint of evil and fretting, or fretting and evil. I call it a hellish combination because fretting and worry and anxiety, these things distract us from what is good and right in the grace of God that allows us to move throughout our day every day. Let's pray together. Lord, We come together in your name to experience your grace, the grace that wakes us up, the grace that allows us to hear you, the grace that gives us peace. Come now and have your own way, Lord, for you are the potter and we are your clay. Amen. Now, We Methodists are called a people of grace. We have a deep affinity with grace, and grace is simply another name for God's love. Grace and love are actually one and the same thing. We even go so deep in God's love and grace that we have this thing that we call prevenient grace. That is the grace that comes before everything, the grace that allows us to hear God calling to our hearts because even to hear God is a gift of God. And on our own, we have no way to hear (coughs) that the master's calling to us and wants us to have relationship with him. And let me tell you, this This relationship is essential to live a life that is full and rich because when we get caught up in fret and worry, we don't live rich and abundant lives because fret and worry steal from us. It steals joy, it steals security, it steals the sense that we are in God's hands and allows us to believe that somehow God has abandoned us and we have to rely only on our own resources. I found that out this week in a very powerful way. When last Sunday happened and I went back to the office and I got my iPad ready to put it inside my bag to go get my lunch and I looked down, that bag was gone. I said to myself, where's my bag? I bought that bag with my own money. Where's my bag? I bought the iPad case inside that bag with my own money. Where's my bag? That bag had papers that were personal to me. Where is my bag? Let alone it had the church laptop in it. (laughs) Where is my bag? And after it settled in that the bag was not in the office and I searched high and low for it, I found myself thinking, somebody took my bag. And I got overwhelmed with a sense of disbelief and disbelief got replaced with anger and anger got me distracted. Miss Burton looked, she, Miss Burton tried to tell me something last week and I couldn't hear a word she was saying. She was trying to talk to me but I was so busy getting angry with my bag, looking for my bag. Where is my bag? And I'm just upset about my bag. Everybody was saying something to me. I said, I don't want to hear it. Where is my bag? That's how we get when we're caught up in fret and worry and anger. People can talk to us. People can try to comfort us. People can try to settle us down, but we won't have any of it because we're too caught up in looking at the wrong thing. We're too caught up in the problem of the moment that we forget about the one who fixes everything. We forget about the one who makes everything all right and puts everything in its proper place. You see, when I was able to finally calm down and remember the one who woke me up in the morning, everything got into its proper place. My bag did not come back, but I came back to my right mind. My bag was still missing But me who was lost finally got found. My bag probably will never come back, 
But I know somebody who walks with me each and every day. I know a grace that is so great and so full and so complete that nothing can ever take it away. God's grace cannot be stolen. It cannot be put down. It cannot be shut out. It is always there. It is we who sometimes shut the door to God's grace, but God's grace still surrounds us because even when we shut the door to God, God has not shut the door on us. Therefore, I turn from anger over the one who took the bag to praying for the one who took the bag. Because the same grace that holds me is the same grace that holds that person. The same God who loves me is the same God who loves that person. The same God who forgives me is the same God who forgives that person. The same God who wants the best for me is the same God who rules the best for that person. We are one in the same God. Because we all come We were created by the same God. And whether or not we admit it, we are brothers and sisters of one another. No matter what we do to each other. No matter what we say about each other. No matter how we feel about each other. We can never erase what God has done in each and every one of us in the relationship that God wants to put us in. That's why God said, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for them, do not curse, because when you pray for them, you stop worrying about them, and you start embracing me as your Savior. And when you embrace me as your Savior, you understand that no matter what happens to you in this earth, no matter how your body may be scourged and bruised, no matter if death comes your way, when you're with me, you are with me forever. You allow God, we allow God to be our strength, our hope, And the reason that we're able to have a joy that the world can't take away. That's an amazing thing. It's an amazing claim that we have. It's an amazing way to live life if we let it be real for each and every one of us. Because when all the worrying is done, have you added one more year to your life? Have you put one more hair on your head? I guarantee you by wearing, you take that hair off your head. You turn gray earlier. Y'all know that's why presidents get gray fast? All the worry on their back ages them like nobody's business. You can see it. You saw it, you saw it with Barack. He came in an office young and vital. He left with gray hair. Because so much worry was on his back. That's what fretting does to us. It turns us gray early. And I don't mean just the hair on our head. It turns the bones gray. It turns the heart gray. It turns joy that you have, it turns it old and feeble so your joy just can't be expressed that much anymore and you get stiff. It's an arthritic happening evil is it stiffens us up so that we can no longer be flexible like God wants us to be flexible and we find ourselves so stiff and crickety that every move hurts a little bit so you want to stop moving whatsoever and stay right where you are and then evil smiles and laughs because once evil got you stuck and stiff evil says you're mine every image of a faithful person in scriptures almost every image even the image that says be still is an active image when we're with God we're always moving even when we're standing still we're still moving for God Even if our bodies are quiet and silent, somewhere on the inside, there's a still, small voice that speaks, that renews and refreshes, that makes us whole on the inside. Something's always going on if you're a Christian, and the something that's going on is God's grace lifting us higher and higher and higher from day to day. 
so that when it's time for our bodies to move, they can move in ways that heal, move in ways that renew, move in ways that refresh and let each other know that I'm going to treat you like my brother and my sister because we are one in God. So if you're going to pay attention to anybody, pay attention to those that love peace. Watch how they live and how they move. Because if you pay attention to those that love mess, boy, you're going to get a whole lot of mess with them. And the world loves that mess because the world loves drama. The world loves mess because mess always stirs the pot and mess always seems exciting. The world loves mess because mess means somebody's in trouble. And when I see that they're in trouble, I can pretend like I ain't got troubles of my own. The world loves mess because mess distracts us from what is real and what is right and what is true and what is noble and what is peaceable. You see, but when we get some peace inside of us, when we're able to be still and know that God is God, you know what starts happening? You know why most folk don't like to pray? Because when you still and pray, the stuff you try to keep down, the stuff you try to put away, the stuff you didn't want to deal with, the stuff you thought you can hide, God starts talking to you about it. And when God starts bringing it up, it doesn't always feel all that nice inside. But if you listen closely enough, if you listen carefully enough, you discover that God brings it up so that God can take it away and give us brand new lives from day to day. God only brings stuff up so it will stop being on your back. God says, come to me all who are heavy laden and burdened. Let me be your rest. God wants to walk with you, be with you, carry your burden with you so you know your burden can't hold you down. He says, take my yoke upon you because what I want to give you is well-fitting. It won't chafe you. It won't scratch you. It won't mess you up. If you take my yoke upon you, you're going to be able to stand up straight and the world's not going to weigh you down no more. Evil can't hold us. Hell can't claim us. And we don't claim hell when we claim God's grace. Hell is the opposite of God's grace. Hell is a place where love does not exist because everybody in hell is too busy trying to point out each other's mess. Hell is the place where grace has no footing because everybody's too busy thinking, I got this. I can do it all by myself. I don't need my no help and I don't need you. Hell is the place where everybody's out for themselves because they don't trust that anybody could be on their side. Hell looks a lot like the world when God's not in it. It's a place where we destroy our air, sully our water, and poison our earth. It's a place we build up so much that there's no green grass left. It's a place we divide neighborhoods by economics and by colors and by genders and by everything else. Hell is a place we refuse to talk to one another if somebody doesn't speak the language that I speak. Hell is a place where evil thrives. Because people are stuck, afraid to move, afraid of pain, afraid of trouble. And they get so stuck that when things happen, they want to lock every door, close off every entrance, and make sure nobody goes across the border so that your trouble can't be mine. Hell is lonely. And it's a hellish place because evil wants you to be lonely. 
It wants you to be by yourself. It wants you isolated. Because that's when you're most vulnerable. But grace, God's amazing grace, when we get found by grace and we allow grace to find us, we get connected to one another. And your strength becomes my strength. My strength becomes your strength because our strength is God's strength. And we share this with one another so that when I see you about to fall down, I'm there to help pick you up. I catch you as you fall. When I see you messing up, I'm there to stand praying for you till you come back to your right mind and till finally we can talk to one another. When I see you going down the wrong path, I'm able to say, wait a minute. Look where you're going. Is that really where you want to be? And if you still choose to go that way, I'll wait till you come back and say, it's okay. In God's grace, we care for each other. We uplift each other. We support one another. Because none of us can make it by ourselves. We need one another. The old word is interdependent. I don't know what the new word is. I like that word interdependent. Because I need you to live my life. And you need me to live yours. I can't do it on my own. Frank Sinatra was wrong. You try to do it your way, you're going to end up no way. The song should say, I did it my way with your help. I did it my way through your prayers. I did it my way with your gifts. I did it my way because you lifted me up far enough so I can see where God wanted me to be. That's what it means to do it our way as Christians. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.